Welcome, YouTubers, to another episode in my Grammar Hero series. In today's video, I'm going to be discussing how to calculate discounts, tax, and tips. And in addition, I'm also going to discuss how to find the original price of an item when you're either given a discount or a tax on that item. More specifically, I'm going to work out 10 practice test questions that should very closely mirror what you should expect to see on both the Armed Services Vocational Aptitude Battery, that is the ASVAB, as well as the pre-screening Internet Delivered Computer Adaptive Test, that is the PICAT. That is to say, you will almost certainly see one of these topics on the actual ASVAB and PICAT, so make sure you can calculate discounts, tax, and tips, as well as find the original price of something. As a quick reminder, on the actual ASVAB and PICAT, you will not be permitted to use a calculator or a reference sheet. So for all these practice test questions, you want to try to work everything out from memory and by hand. Of course, in order to get the most from this video, you'll want to pause the video after I read a practice test question, attempt to work out that question on your own, and then resume playing the video to check your solution. So with all those things finally being said, Let's go ahead and get started with this video. All right, so before we get started, I just want to give you a quick overview as to how you calculate a discount. Uh, of course, in this video, we're going to take an algebraic approach to solving these problems. And when we find the discount of an item, what really are we finding? We're finding the sales price of an item. And how do we calculate that? Well, we're going to be given the original price of the item. So we're going to take the price of the item. And from that, we're going to subtract the discount amount, which is always going to be given as a percent that we're going to convert to decimal. And we're going to multiply that by the price. All right, so this is how you calculate discounts. Uh, you take the price of an item. And from that, you subtract the discount times the price. That's all there is to it. If you can work with decimals, then you can calculate discounts. And for that reason, let's take a look at our first practice test question. Uh, this first question involving a discount says this. In a department store, a $40 dress is marked save 25%. What is the sale price of the dress with the discount? All right, so for this problem, I'm going to solve it algebraically. And that's going to look like this. We're trying to figure out what the sale price of this dress is, and that's going to be equal to the price of the dress minus the discount times the price. And thankfully enough, uh, we know all the values for these things on the right-hand side of this equation. What is the price of the dress? We know this dress is $40. What is the discount amount? Well, right here it says we're going to get a 25% discount. To do this math, of course, we're going to have to express 25% in decimal form. The decimal equivalent of 25% is 0.25. So this becomes 40 minus 0.25. And of course, that's multiplied by the price of the dress, which is $40. So to get our sales price, all we have to do is some simple arithmetic here, notably 40 minus 0.25 times 40. Let's start by doing this multiplication involving the decimal first. We have 40 times 0.25. When you multiply a whole number by a decimal, you want to clear that decimal. So I'm going to shift this decimal in 0.25 one, two times to the right uh, to make this simply 40 times 25, albeit with no decimals. Once I work this out without decimals, I'll take those two decimal places that I shifted to the right and shift them back into the left. All right, so let's work this out now. We have zero times five, which is zero. Four times five is 20. Before we start multiplication with that two, we have to bring in a zero placeholder. Two times zero is zero. Two times four is eight. Uh, this is 0 plus 0, which is 0, 0 plus 0, which is 0, uh, 8 plus 2, which is 10. Bring in our two decimals, 1, 2. 
So we can see that 25% of 40 is 10. So this becomes 40 minus 10. 40 minus 10, of course, is 30. So this dress, which costs $40 and has a 25% discount, will cost $30 in total with that discount applied. All right, so as you can see, number two says this. A pair of sandals costs $10.50. If there is a 10% discount on them, then what is the new cost of the sandals? So as we did in the previous problem, we're trying to figure out the sale price of the sandals. Of course, that's going to be equal to the price of the sandals minus the discount amount times the price of the sandals. And thankfully, we know both the price as well as the discount amount. Of course, we know these sandals cost $10.50. Uh, we know our discount is 10%. Of course, we're going to be, of course, we're going to express that in decimal form. The decimal equivalent of 10% is 0.1. So this is 1050 minus 0.1 times the price of the sandals, which is 1050. All right, so the first thing we have to do is 1050 times 0.1. And so as not to make a mistake, I'm going to do that off to the side here. We have 1050 times 0.1. So in this case, we're multiplying two numbers that have decimals in them. So we're going to have to clear all these decimals. In 1050, I'm going to have to shift my decimal place two times to the right and in 0.1. I'm going to have to shift my decimal place one time to the right. So in total, I shifted my decimal place three times. Uh, this math becomes this, 1,050 times 1, albeit with three decimal places to, mo to move back into the left at the end when I'm done. So 0 times 1 is 0. 1 times 5 is 5. 1 times 0 is 0. 1 times 1 is 1. Bring our three decimals that we move to the right here back into the left. One, two, three. So we can see that uh, 0 0.1 times 1050 is 105. All right, so now let's do this subtraction. Again, this is tedious, so I don't want to make a mistake. So I'm going to do this off to the side. We have 1050 minus 105, of course. Uh, let's work this out. We can't do 0 minus 5, so we have to borrow. This becomes 4. This becomes 10. 10 minus 5 is 5. 4 minus nothing is 4. Drop down our decimal in place. 0 minus 1 I can't do, so I have to borrow. This becomes 0. This becomes 10. 10 minus 1 is 9. So we can see the sales price of these sandals with the discount applied is B945. All right, so calculating tax is as easy as calculating a uh, sales price. Uh, in this case, we're going to be calculating the total price, which is going to include the price that we're given, plus the tax amount times the price. And that's all we have to do to calculate a price that includes tax. All right, so with that in mind, let's go ahead and look at this first question. This uh, first question says this, Anderson purchased a dress shirt for $22.20. If the shirt includes a 5% sales tax, what is the actual price of the shirt? So in this case, we want to know the total price of this shirt, which is going to include the price of the shirt plus the tax amount times the price. And that's all we have to do to calculate the total price that includes tax. And let's go ahead and plug these values in since we know them. What is the price of the shirt? According to the problem, it is 2220. What is the tax amount? Well, according to this problem, there is a 5% sales tax. Of course, we're going to express that in decimal form. The decimal equivalent of 5% is 0.05. So this is 0.05 times the price of the shirt, which again is 2220. So by doing this simple arithmetic here, 
uh, we'll know what the total price of this shirt was. Uh, to start, we're going to do 0.05 times 2220. And I'm going to do that off to the side so as not to make any mistakes. We have 2220 times 0.05. Of course, we got to clear the decimals in both 2220 as well as 0.05 to proceed. So here I'm going to move the decimal one two times to the right. And here I'm going to move the decimal one two times to the right. So in total, I move my decimal place four times to the right to rewrite this problem as 2220 times. Uh, again, 05 is just the same thing as 5. All right, so we'll simplify that a little bit. And now that we've done that, let's go ahead and work this out. 0 times 5 is 0. 2 times 5 is 10, so bring down a 0, carry a 1. 2 times 5 is 10, plus 1 is 11. Bring down a 1, carry a 1. 2 times 5 is 10, plus 1 is 11. Bring our four decimals back in. 1, 2, 3, 4. All right, so we can see that uh, 0 0.05 times 2220 is 111. All right, so now let's go ahead and uh, do this math right here. Uh, we're adding two decimals, and that's a little bit tedious, so I'm going to do this off to the side. We have 2220 plus 111. Uh, 0 plus 1 is 1. 2 plus 1 is 3. Drop down our decimal in place. 2 plus 1 is 3. 2 plus nothing is 2. So we get 2331. So the total price of this dress shirt, including the 5% sales tax, is 2331, which you can see is answer choice uh, C in this case. All right, so uh, number two, as you can see, says Michael purchased a ticket to a football game for $45.50. If this ticket includes a 7% sales tax, what is the total price of the ticket? So in this case, we're going to be finding the total price of the ticket, which is going to be the price of the ticket plus the uh, tax amount times the price. Thankfully enough, we know all these things. What is the price of the ticket? It's $45.50. What is the tax amount? It's right here at 7%. Of course, we're going to express that in decimal form. The decimal equivalent of 7% is 0.07. Of course, that's multiplied by the price, which is $45.50. All right, so let's work this out. To start, we have $45.50 times 0.07. Let's clear these decimals now. You know the drill by now. Uh, let's move this decimal place one, two times. Let's move this decimal one, two times. So in total, we moved our decimal place four times to make this four, five, five, zero times seven. Once I work this out, I'll move my decimal in my answer to the left four times. Uh, Zero times seven is zero. Seven times uh, five is 35, carry a three. Seven times five is 35, 36, 37, 38, carry a three. Four times seven is 28, 29, 30, 31. Bring our four decimals back in. One, two, three, four. So we can see that this becomes 45, 50 plus 0.07 times 45.50 is 3.185. All right, so let's go ahead and add these two decimals together now. We have 45.50 plus 3.185. Uh, if it's necessary, you can add a zero placeholder here where that number is missing. Zero plus five is five. Zero plus eight is eight. Uh, 5 plus 1 is 6. Drop down your decimal in place. Uh, 5 plus 3 is 8. And 4 plus nothing is 4. All right. So we can see that uh, 45.50 plus 3.185 is 48.685. Of course, that's not one of our answer choices. 
Uh, you can see that they're all 48. This one's 30, so that's not even close. This one's 40, that's not even close. And this one's 50, that's not even close. Well, if we look at this answer choice, we can see that what they did is they took this 8, they looked at the number to the right of the 8, which is a 5, and that prompted them to round up this uh, 8 to a 9. So that's how they got 4869. All right, so the correct answer to this one is D4869. All right, so let me say this before we get started with these tip questions. As you can see, there's going to be two of them. If you can calculate discounts as well as tax, then you should have no issues calculating tips. Uh, again, we're going to be finding a total price. And in this case, our total price is going to include the price plus the tip amount, which I'm just going to call tip, times the price. Now, more often than not, the tip amount is going to be expressed in decimal form. And that's all we have to do to figure out the total price of something. That includes the tip amount. All right, so with that said, let's go ahead and get started with this first practice test question. So this first question says, John and his family went out to eat at their favorite restaurant. The bill for the food was $65, and they left a 20% tip for the server. What was the total cost of their meal, including the tip? So in this case, we want to find the total cost or the total price of the meal, which is going to be equal to the price of the meal plus the tip amount, or just the tip, times the price. All right, we know the price of the meal was $65 according to the problem. We also know that the tip amount was 20%. Of course, we're going to express that in decimal form as 0.2. So this is 65 plus 0.2 times the price, which is 65. All right, so let's work this out very quickly. Uh, to start, we're going to do 65 times 0.2. Uh, let's clear that decimal and 0.2 by shifting it one time to the right, uh, such that this problem becomes 65 times 2, albeit with that one decimal to shift back into our answer at, at the end. Uh, 5 times 2 is 10, carry a 1. 6 times 2 is 12, plus 1 is 13. Bring our decimal back in. So this becomes 65, and as we just saw, 0. 0.2 times 65 is 13. And if you don't want to make a mistake once you've gotten this far, you can always do this off to the side as well. Uh, 5 plus 3 is 8, 6 plus 1 is 7. So the total cost or the total price of their meal including a 20% tip is a $78. All right, so uh, number two says this. Miss Smith paid $125 to have her hair colored and cut. If she tips her hairdresser 15% of her bill, what was the total cost of her haircut, including the tip? So we want to find the total cost or the total price of this haircut. Uh, that's going to include the price of the haircut plus the tip amount times the price of the haircut. And of course, we know both of those things. Uh, the price of the haircut was $125. According to this problem, she gave a 15% tip. So the tip amount is going to be expressed in decimal form. That's going to be 0.15. This becomes 0.15 times the price of the haircut, which is 125 all right, so all we have to do is some very simple arithmetic to figure this one out. We have 125 times 0.15. Again, we want to clear that decimal in 0.15 to make this math a little bit easier to do. So I'm going to take this decimal and shift it one, two times to the right. This becomes 125 times 15, albeit with those two decimals to shift back into the left at the end when we're done. Uh, five times five is 25, carry a two. 2 times 5 is 10, plus 2 is 12, carry a 1. 5 times 1, of course, is 5, plus 1 is 6. Before we start multiplication with that 0, we've got to bring in a 0 placeholder. 1 times 5 is 5, 1 times 2 is 2, 1 times 1 is 1. Let's add these together. 5 plus 0 is 5, 5 plus 2 is 7, 6 plus 2 is 8. 1 plus nothing is 1. All right, so let's go ahead and shift our two decimals back into the left. One, two. 
So we can see that this becomes 125 plus, what is 15% of 125? Well, that's 1875. All right, let's go ahead and do this math off to the side so as not to make any mistakes. We have 125 plus 1875. If it's helpful, you can add a decimal and some zero placeholders there. Zero plus five is five, zero plus seven is seven. Drop down your decimal in place. Five plus eight, that's eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Carry out one. Two plus two is four. One plus nothing is one. So this becomes 143.75. So in total, she paid 143.75 for her haircut which is answer choice C. And of course that included uh, the 15% tip that she gave for it. All right, so now we're gonna look at one question which doesn't appear that frequently on the ASVAB or PiCat uh, that requires us to calculate a discount and then add tax. Uh, so again, if you can calculate a discount and then you can calculate tax, then you should be able to do this question pretty easily. I'm just gonna talk about how I'm gonna solve this problem so that it will help you work this one out. So generally speaking, before tax is applied to a price, you're gonna apply your discount. So uh, in this case, the first thing you're gonna do is calculate your discounted price, which is gonna be your price minus your discount, if I can spell discount, times your price. All right, so once you get that discounted price, now you're gonna have to find your total price, which is gonna be your discounted price, which I'm gonna call DP, plus the tax that's gonna be added to that discounted price. Of course, that's gonna be tax times your discounted price. All right, so for this problem, there's two steps. The first thing you're gonna do is calculate your discounted price, which is fairly easy to do. You've done this already. And then once we get that discounted price, we're gonna calculate our total price, which is gonna be the discounted price plus the tax that's added to that discounted price. So that's all you have to do for a problem like this. And with that in mind, let's go ahead and take a look at it. All right, so this one says this there is a 20% sale on an item and then 8% sales tax is applied to that after sale price. If a pair of shoes cost $125, then how much do they cost after the discount and tax are added to the price? So as I just mentioned, the first thing you have to do for a problem like this is you have to figure out what the discounted price is. And of course we've done that in this video several times. That's gonna be the price minus the discount amount times the price. And thankfully we know those things. What is the price of the shoes? It's $125. What is the discount amount? Well, it says it's right here, they're 20% off. So that's gonna be expressed in decimal form as 0.2. So this becomes 125 minus 0.2 times the price. Again, that's 125. Let's go ahead and work this off to the side. We have 125 times 0.2. Again, we wanna clear this decimal in 0.2 by shifting it one time to the right to make this 125 times two, albeit with no decimals. Uh, once I work this out, I'm gonna take my decimal that I moved to the right here and I'm gonna move it to the left in my answer. Five times two is 10, so to bring down a zero, carry a one. Two times two is four plus one is five, and two plus one is just two. So bring our one decimal back in. This becomes 125 minus 25. 125 minus 25 is pretty easy to do. That's gonna be 100. So after we apply a 20% discount, uh, to our shoes that cost $125. The discounted price is $100. Now, of course, we gotta figure out what the total price of these shoes are, which is gonna be the discounted price, which I'm gonna call DP, plus the tax amount 
times the discounted price. And of course, we now know the, those things. Uh, we know the discounted price is $100. We know the tax amount, according to the problem, is 8%. And in decimal form, that's going to be 0.08. So this becomes 0.08 times the discounted price, which is $100. All right, so uh, all we have to do is, and that should be this total price, not total prices. Uh, all we have to do is this simple arithmetic here uh, to figure out what our total price is going to be. It's going to be 100 times 0.08. Let's go ahead and get that out of the way. Um, to make this math a little bit easier, we want to shift this decimal in 0.08, 1 two times to the right, such that this becomes 100 times eight. Uh, once I do this math, I'm gonna take my decimals that I shifted to the right and shift them back into the left. Zero times eight is zero, zero times eight is zero, one times eight is eight, bring our two decimals back in, one, two. So this becomes 100 plus eight. 100 plus eight is simply 108. So the total price of these uh, shoes uh, after the discount is applied and then sales taxes added back in is B, $108. All right, so now that we've discussed uh, calculating discounts, tax, and tips, let's move on to something that's a little bit more challenging and let's talk about calculating original price. Uh, let me just say this, nothing is gonna change in terms of the way I set up these problems. That said, as you're gonna see, it's going to take a little bit of algebra to actually figure these out. It's nothing too difficult, uh, but that said, it does take uh, one or two practice test questions for you to get the hang of this. So with that in mind, let's take a look at this first question. All right, so uh, this first question says this. The sales price of a computer after a discount was $1,200. If the discount was 20%, what was the original price of the computer? So, uh, again, we're working with a discount here. So to figure out the sales price, as you may remember from uh, the first part of this video, we did price minus the discount times the price. Well, in this case, we're given the sales price and the discount, and we're being asked to figure out what the price is. All right, so what is the sales price according to this problem? Uh, the sales price after the discount applied was $1,200. So this is 1,200 equals, again, we don't know what the price is. So I'll just write that down as price minus, what was the discount? It was 20%. So that's gonna be 0.2 in decimal form uh, times the price. All right, so now's where you have to think about this problem algebraically. And for that reason, I'm gonna use the letter variable P to represent price. So let's think about this algebraically. This becomes 1200 equals price minus 0.2 times the price. Well, what do you know about algebra that's gonna make this a little bit easier? Well, technically there is a one in front of this letter variable P. In algebra, you don't write that. So what we have here is one P minus 0.2p. And is that something we can work out? As a matter of fact, it is. Uh, this is 1p minus 0.2p. Well, let's just do this off to the side. We have 1 minus 0.2. Uh, 0 minus 0 is 0. 0 minus 2 I can't do, so I have to borrow. This becomes 0. This becomes 10. 10 minus 2 is 8. Drop down our decimal. And 0 minus nothing is just nothing. So 1p minus 0.2p is 0.8p. All right. And now we can actually solve this equation for p, which is the original price of the item. In this case, the computer before the discount was applied. And to do that, all we have to do is divide both sides of the equation by 0.8. This leaves us with p on this side. Uh, of course, we got to do this arithmetic uh, to solve this one. And I'm going to do it off to the side so as not to make any mistakes. Right here, we have 1,200 divided by 0.8. Of course, 
uh, when you do long division with a decimal, you can't leave that decimal outside the division bracket. So you're going to have to shift it however many times you need to to the right to clear it. So I'm going to move it one time to the right to make 0.88. And of course, I'm going to have to shift the decimal inside the division bracket the corresponding number of times. In 1200, the decimal is right there. So I'm going to shift it one time there. So instead of being uh, 1200, it's now going to be 12. Thousand. All right, so let's do this long division now. How many times does 8 go into 12 without going over? Of course, that's one time. 8 times 1 is 8. 12 minus 8 is 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That's 4. And we can drop down this 0. You should know that 8 goes into 45 times. Therefore, you should be able to say 8 goes into 4,500 hundred times. Eight times 500 is 4,000. 4,000 minus 4,000 is nothing. All right, so the original price or the price of this computer was $1,500 before the discount was applied. So the correct, the correct answer to this one is B, $1,500. So number two says this, Michael purchased a pair of jeans for $2,205. If that included a 5% sales tax, then what was the actual price of the jeans? That is before the tax was added to the price. All right, so remember when we talked about tax, we did this. We said the total price of an item was equal to the price of the item plus the tax amount times the price of the item. Well, in this case, we're given the total price of the item and we're given the tax amount, but we want to know the price of the item before that tax was added. So we're going to solve this one just like the previous one. The price of the jeans after tax was added was uh, 2205. Of course, this equals the price, which we do not know, plus the tax amount, which is 5% in decimal form, that's 0 0.05 times the price, which we do not know. So in order to solve this one, we're going to have to think algebraically. And again, in math, we can use letter variables instead of words to represent these unknown values. So I'm going to use P in place of price. So this becomes P plus 0.05p. And as we saw previously, there's technically an imaginary one in front of this p. And that means we can go ahead and add these two things together. Again, 1p, 1p plus 0.05p is going to be 1.05p. And if you needed to, I could work that off to the side. That's 1 plus 0.05. Of course, uh, to make this a little bit easier, you can add in zero placeholders as needed. Zero plus five is five. Zero plus zero is zero. Drop down your decimal in place. One plus zero is one. So again, price or P refers to the original price before sales tax was added. So to get that by itself, we're just going to divide both sides of this equation by 1.05. This is going to cross out here, leaving us with just P on this side. And now the tedious part of the problem is doing this long division. Uh, we can read this as 2205 divided by 1.05. So when you do long division involving decimals, you cannot have a decimal outside this division bracket. So here we have 1.05. We got to clear that decimal. So we're going to shift it one, two times to the right to make that 105. And of course, we're going to shift the decimal inside the division bracket the corresponding number of times, notably one, two times. So this problem becomes this, 2205 divided by 105. All right, let's go ahead and start working on this. Uh, to start, we're going to ask ourselves, how many times does 105 go into 2? It doesn't. How many times does 105 go into 22? It doesn't. How many times does 105 go into 220 without going over? Of course, that's going to be two times. Uh, 
if you can't do this in your head, you could always do it off to the side. We have 105 times 2. 5 times 2 is 10. Carry a 1. Uh, 2 times uh, 0 is 0 plus 1 is 1. 2 times a 1 is 2. So 105 times 2 is 210. Let's subtract this out now. 210, 220 minus 210 is 10. And of course, we drop down this 5. And the question is this. How many times does 105 go into 105? Of course, that's going to be 1 time. 105 times 105 is 105. 105 minus 105 is 0. Since I hit a 0, I know I'm done working this out. Therefore, I know P are the original price of these uh, jeans before tax was added was simply $21, which is answer choice A in this case. Uh, number three says this, Alex purchased groceries for $40.50. If that included an 8% sales tax, then what was the actual price of the groceries before the tax was added? So in this case, uh, we're going to be doing this. We know we're dealing with tax, so we're going to be working with total price again. And of course, you know that total price is equal to the price plus the tax amount times the price. Well, in this case, we know what the total price was after tax was added. That was forty fifty. We do not know what the price of these groceries were before tax was added, so we're going to leave that as price. Uh, we know the tax amount in this case was 8%, so that's 0.08 in decimal form. And of course, that's times price. All right, so now we're just going to use some very basic algebra to rewrite this. This becomes 40, 50 equals. Instead of using words to represent unknowns, I'm going to use letter variables. And most obviously, I'm going to use the letter variable P to represent this unknown price. So that's going to be P plus 0.08P. Of course, it's a if it's helpful, you can place that imaginary one in front of this P. And of course, uh, you should be able to work this out fairly quickly. 1P plus 0.0P. 1P plus 0.08P is going to be 1.08P. So we have 40, 50 equals 1.08P. And of course, I can work this off to the side if you need to see it. We have 1P plus 0.08P. So that's going to be 1 plus 0.08. Add your decimal and your zero placeholders in accordingly. Uh, 0 plus 8 is 0. 0 plus 8 is 8. 0 plus 0 is 0. Drop down your decimal in place. 1 plus nothing is 1. So that's how I got 1.08p right there. Of course, p is the price of these groceries before tax was added. So we're going to be solving for p now, which means we're going to divide both sides of this equation by 1.08. Go ahead and cross this out. And this is where the hard part comes into play. We have to do 4050 divided by 1.08. Now it looks like this. 4050 divided by 1.08. Of course, when you uh, divide decimals, you cannot have a decimal outside this division bracket. So we're going to have to shift this decimal in 1.081 two times to the right to make that 108. And at the same time, we're going to shift this decimal inside the division bracket corresponding number of times, notably one, two times to make that 40, 50. Uh, now that we've done that, we can go ahead and proceed. Of course, uh, it's going to be helpful in this case to look at your answer choices to figure out how to do this long division. Uh, you can see that they all start with three. And what's that mean in terms of doing long division here? Well, right now we're asking ourselves, how many times does 108 go into 4? It doesn't. How many times does 108 go into 40? It doesn't. How many times does 108 go into 405? Well, we know our answer choices start with 3, so we know this must be 3. And, of course, we can do that off to the side to get that number. Uh, 3 times 8 is 24. Carry a 2. 3 times 0 is 0. Plus 2 is 2. 3 times 1 is 3. So this is 324. What is 405 minus 324? 5 minus 4 is 1. 0 minus 2 we can't do, so we have to borrow. This becomes 3. This becomes 10. 
10 minus 2 is 8, and 3 minus 3 is 0. Let's go ahead and drop down this 0 now. Now the question is this. How many times does 108 go into 810 without going over? You should be able to say that's going to be about 7 times. And of course, you can do that math off to the side to confirm it. Uh, 7 times 8 is 56. Carry out 5. 0 times 7 is 0, plus 5 is 5, and 7 times 1 is 7. So this is 810 minus 756. Let's go ahead and work this out now. Um, 0 minus 6 we can't do, so we have to borrow. This becomes 0. This becomes 10. 10 minus 6 is 4. 0 minus 5 we can't do. We have to borrow. This becomes 7. This becomes 10. 10 minus 5 is 5. Uh, 7 minus 7 is 0. Uh, 108 doesn't go into, so what we have to do is add a decimal here and a 0 placeholder. Now we can drop down this 0, and of course we're going to take our decimal and put it up in our answer. How many times does 108 go into 540? You should know that that's probably going to be about 5 times, but to confirm that, let's work that off to the side. Uh, 8 times 5 is 40, so bring down a 0, carry a 4. 0 times 5 is 0, plus 4 is 4. 1 times 5 is uh, 5. So 108 times 5 is exactly 540. 540 minus 540 is 0. Since I hit a remainder of 0, I know I'm done here. Before uh, tax was added was 3750. Let me go ahead and move back up here. And the price of these groceries before tax was added is going to be $37.50, which is answer choice B, of course. All right, so that is it for this video. As always, I hope you found it helpful. And as usual, you're more than welcome to leave feedback in the comment section below. Honestly, I strongly believe that all of these topics, that is calculating discounts, tax tips, and finding original price should be taught in one lesson since all these topics, as you just saw, are very closely related and require the same skills in order to solve. Anyone who teaches these topics separately is doing you a disservice, in my opinion, because they are just giving you bits and pieces of these topics rather than showing you, again, that they are all interrelated. Uh, if you like my content, you can do one of two things to help my channel out. You can, of course, one, subscribe to my channel. That's always helpful. And two, you're more than welcome to share links, including links to this video on social media, including on Facebook and Twitter. And on that note, I'm going to go ahead and cut you loose. Konnichiwa.